What's up guys, today I'm going to teach you how to play your suited aces just like the pros. This is one of the most important hands in Texas Hold'em and you need to know the advanced strategy to crush with these hands. Let's jump right into it. Alright guys, so first things first, I just want to talk about the differences between the three different classes of suited aces. This is one of the most important things for you to understand right away. We have premium suited aces, mid suited aces, and baby suited aces. Now premium suited aces essentially play themselves we're talking about hands like ace king of diamonds ace queen of spades ace jack of hearts the suits don't really matter of course they can be any of the four suits but these hands typically play themselves because these are some of the strongest hands in the game often if you hit top pair or some sort of really strong draw you're just going to be playing a big pot and often you're going to be re-raising preflop with these hands or calling a raise preflop as well so these hands are not too difficult to play and i also have multiple videos here on the channel already discussing how to play these hands. You guys can check those out. So today we're going to focus specifically on the mid suited aces and the baby suited aces because this is what a lot of you guys and my students tell me that you have the most problems with. I'm going to walk you through multiple examples today of what to do when you hit the flop just a little bit with these hands. So moving on here just to sum up, mid suited aces are going to be hands like ace 10 suited, ace 9 suited, ace 8 suited, and ace 7 suited. Decent hands but they often often do get amateurs in sticky situations because these hands don't have a strong kicker, unlike what we just talked about with the premium suited aces, ace king, ace queen, ace jack, often you can be very confident when you hit top pair with those hands, but with mid suited aces, you need to be careful. And finally, baby suited aces includes ace six, ace five, ace four, ace three, ace deuce. And these hands are very interesting because they can make the wheel straight, which is the ace, deuce, three, four, five straight. So they have a little bit of added equity. And of course, all of the hands on this list can make the nut flushes as well, which is one of the absolute strong points of suited aces. We're going to talk about that right now. So let's talk about a mid suited aces hand. First as an example, you call a raise on the button with ace 10 of hearts versus an EP open raise from a leg. Now I'm not going to jump in heavy detail in this video about player types and various positions and ranges at the poker table. I have a free poker cheat sheet, which will be the top link in the description below. If you want to know all about that with charts and diagrams and explanations, but based Basically, in a nutshell, EP stands for early position. It's the first seat to act pre-flop in a Texas Hold'em poker game. And lag stands for loose and aggressive. It's one of these regular opponents. This is not a fish, remember, a recreational player. This is a regular decent player, but they do play a few more hands than the Titan Aggressive or the Rock that you might be more familiar with. This is the loose and aggressive variant of a regular. So the flop comes down with a queen of clubs, 10 of diamonds, and three of hearts. Very, very interesting board. Lag makes their standard continuation bet here. What should you be doing? Well guys, this is all about knowing when to float. And let me define a float first, because a lot of people get this mixed up. I actually talk about this in detail in my second and third book, is that a float is when you call in position specifically on the flop with the express intention of taking away the pot later on in the hand on the turn or river. So there's two parts to a float. It's a call in position, meaning we're last to act, and it also includes a clear intention to win the pot later on. We're not just calling the flop just for something to do. Our intention is to win this pot, and we're going to do anything possible to make that happen. So now let's talk about why do we float on this board here. Well, queen 10 3 is a pretty good flop for ace 10. Number one, we have middle pair top kicker. We are essentially ahead of this player's entire bluffing range. And remember, this is a loose and aggressive player, guys. And even though they raise from EP, which should be their most narrow range, this is still a loose player. So they're going to be playing all sorts of hands, probably all pocket pairs, for example, probably most Broadway hands. So that's any two cards, 10 and above. And they're going to be playing a lot of suited aces themselves, suited connectors, which didn't really hit this board. Basically, there's a lot of stuff in their range here that I think they're going to be betting the flop with that we're still very much ahead of, especially with middle pair top kicker. 
and hopefully you guys also notice that we have the nut back door flush draw in this situation and I actually should have put it on the board as well is that the beautiful thing about suited aces is you still always have the ace guys so you've got three more additional outs here even if this player has a hand like queen jack for example we still have three outs to the ace there's still the ace of spades the ace of diamonds and the ace of clubs still remaining in the deck so we really do have a lot of hidden equity on this board it's really important for you guys especially that are just starting out in the game for you to understand how to analyze various flop board textures like this i have an entire 30 minute video in my brand new elite poker training university where i actually walk you through around a dozen different flop board textures like this so you can see and show you specifically how to read these flops and understand where your range advantage is versus various player types where they raise from pre-flop this is along with 17 hours of advanced poker training hundreds of cheat sheets and so on you can enroll right now i'll leave a link below this video but let's discuss another spot right now with a baby suited ace we're going to talk about ace five of hearts and we're going to talk specifically about bluff raising with suited aces as you guys might know if you're fans of the channel here this is one of my favorite hands to bluff raise with and there's a specific reason why i'm going to discuss that in just a second so we call with ace five of hearts on the button once again same action preflop versus an ep open raise from a loose and aggressive player and the exact same flop with a queen of clubs 10 of diamonds and three of hearts lag makes their c-bat once again so guys this is a great spot to bluff raise and the reason why is because our hand actually has less equity this time we don't have a pair but hopefully you guys already noticed that this hand has very strong potential because it has multiple backdoor draws plus the ace let's talk about the two backdoor draws first number one the wheel straight draw if the turn came with a four and the river came with a deuce we would have the wheel straight ace two three four five and of course we have the beautiful backdoor nut flush draw aka the best flush draw possible if the turn and river came heart heart we would make the nut flush we also of course once again still have the ace so we have three outs remaining in the deck even if this player does have a queen or does have a 10 right now or some sort of other pair to beat us. The other thing, as we mentioned before, is that player type and positions at the poker table are incredibly key to this hand. This is a loose and aggressive player type, guys, and remember, their range is going to have a lot of pocket pairs in them, in it. Suited aces, suited connectors, all sorts of hands like pocket eights, for example, you know, is not going to be able to withstand a raise on this flop. Maybe this player has a hand like seven, eight of spades or something, a suited connector like that. Once again, this hand is not going to be able to withstand a raise in this situation. And guys, remember, we're going to be applying pressure later on in the hand as well. Even if we do not get a fold right now it's okay because we're going to be continuing to empty the clip later on in the hand I have like a hundred examples in my second book modern small stakes talking about this but guys this is the key to a successful bluff raising strategy these are great hands to do it with you want to do it when you have some decent backdoor equity we have tons of it with this hand right here and you want to do it against a player type like this who has a very wide range and therefore we can often keep our foot on the gas pedal and even if we get called on the flop here we can often get them to lay it down on the turn and or river guys let me know how you play your suited aces in the comments below like and subscribe if you found this video helpful and once again if you want to know my entire strategy to smash the small and mid stakes games make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet that'll be the top link in the description below thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll catch you next time all the best to the poker tables unless you're on mine